Hey fellow babies, welcome back to Packer Factor on Sifted.net. Uh, if you're a Patreon patron, thank you for your patronage. If you're watching on YouTube as a subscriber, thank you for that. Um, it is the holidays, so I'm sure you've had a lot on your minds, but see if you could remember to link your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch Prime account. Uh, we get paid by Amazon if you do that, and the instructions are in the show description below. Today's question from Patreon from Tarma. By most objective measures like reviews, user reviews, and sales, this has not been a great year for video game releases. Does it concern you with it being the first full year for PS5 and Xbox series? Is it just a blip and normal when new consoles launch or a sign of things to come? Uh, I don't think we have good sales numbers. And to be honest with you, I, I think the sales data we get is really, really skewed because we don't get digital sales. And, and as an example, and I'm gonna roll back to 2020, um, Assassin's Creed Valhalla launched, and I don't, I don't really don't remember the MPD number, so I can't divulge it. But whatever it was, it was like 10,000 units on the Xbox. It was like some really crazy low number. And I talked to uh, Ubisoft about it, and I'm like, "Did you sell like no copies on the Xbox Series X?" And they go, "No, we sold like you know a million. I mean, like we, we sold like 50% attach rate, or you know, some crazy number." And I go. Were they all digital? And the answer was yes. You know, so I, I don't think we can track this stuff. If the company doesn't tell you that they, they had a bad year, don't listen to these third-party services. So, so no, I, I think we're okay. Um, I just think more people are buying digital copies and, you know, it is what it is. And I don't, the year, this was not a good year for new game releases. So Nintendo didn't have any really big, compelling titles to buy. Um, Take Two had nothing, you know, new. I mean, they had remasters. Um, Activision had nothing new other than just the standard Call of Duty that comes out every year. So it was a very light year. And then UB made a bad Far Cry, and, and EA made a mediocre Battlefield. Um, so it's, it's a bad year because it was just a light year. Uh, but I, I'm not worried about it at all. And and honestly, most of of these sales for these companies is coming from add-on, you know, ongoing FIFA Ultimate Team, Grand Theft Auto Online, uh, Call of Duty Warzone. I don't think Activision would be permanently scarred if Call of Duty sales went from 25 million to 20 million, but uh, Warzone went from you know 500 million to 700 million, and Call of Duty Mobile went from you know 800 million to a billion. I think they'd be fine. So you know that's the point that they they don't really care where they get the money, and you know, as a consumer, if you're getting your Call of Duty fix on mobile, it's okay that you didn't buy the $60 game. So I, I, I actually think you have to look at these things holistically. And I mean, the sign of things to come is we're, we're definitely shifting toward multiple business models for a franchise. And I just expect that's going to continue. I think you're going to see more of it. I, I, I just had a talk with Laura Mealy at e, EA. Uh, who's going to be or is the COO. And I told her the story of, you know, asking uh, uh, Andrew Wilson back in, in 14, why wouldn't you make FIFA Ultimate Team, you know, free to play in front of the paywall? You don't have to buy FIFA. And his answer was, well, we'd never sell any copies of FIFA. And I told her that, and I said, I completely disagree. Like, I think you can make FIFA single player really fun, and you can make FIFA Ultimate Team the free to play game, and instead of 25 million people buying FIFA and 20, 20 million people playing Ultimate Team, you'd have 20 million people buying FIFA instead of 25, and 100 million people playing Ultimate Team. And I believe that. And and I don't know if she agrees with me or not, but she listened to me, and so we'll see. I think there's more money in, in democratizing access to a game and letting everybody have access, I think you get more players. And what Activision saw with Call of Duty Warzone and mobile is more people want to play premium. They sold more premium in 2020. So ultimately, I think it's really good to have more people engaged 24 seven. And I think that that's where we're headed. Thanks for joining us on Packer Factor on Sifted.net. Um, if you're a Patreon patron or a YouTube subscriber, thank you for your patronage and you're getting this real time. If you uh, can remember, please link your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch Prime account. The directions are in the show description below. And if you are not supporting us financially, but you just love all the pack you can get a, a hold of, uh, then please follow me on Twitter. You'll get even more on Twitter at Michael Packer. See you next time.